Welcome back to K-Man Builds. Uh, we're excited to announce that we're starting a new series. Uh, I picked up a new shop truck here, and this is a 1996 F-250 extended cab long bed two-wheel drive XL. Uh, this is an all original truck, only has 169,000 miles on it. Uh, the inside is in immaculate condition. Um, I picked it up for about $3,500 from a guy, and uh, he said that he thought that the the heads might have been cracked because it was overheating pretty easily. And in fact, it was when I drove it, uh, it started overheating pretty quick. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the work that we did on the top end of the motor. Uh, we also replaced the front end here. Uh, it had all the black plastic on here. Uh, replaced all of that. Uh, also installed electric door locks, uh, backup camera, and uh, we've got a couple other things that we're working on as well. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the motor itself. Uh, I will tell you that it's been probably 20 years since I've been into the top, top end of a motor. So uh, it was a little bit of a learning curve again to get back into that. So I hope you enjoy the series. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, make them below. All right, so I want you to see how clean this engine is. This, all this rust you see is just from the recent problems I've been having with the overheating. So that is very, very recent. But the rest of this motor, you can see is just, I mean, there's just almost no dirt or grime anywhere on this motor. I mean, you look back in there by the water pump, the distributor, there's a little back in there. Uh, the water pump is leaking, the gasket is, so I'm going to be replacing that, but this thing is very, very clean. I mean, there's just no dirt up in here. I just couldn't believe how clean this thing was when I opened it up. I mean, even all the original stickers are in great shape, so very happy with uh, what I got, and uh, I think it's going to be a really good work truck once I get the top end fixed. So I went ahead and removed the uh, air conditioner and the power steering bracket. Um, and it's got three bolts, big long bolts here. What I did is I went ahead and put the top two back in so that when I go to remove this head, it gives me something to kind of grip a hold of. Uh, makes it a little easier for removing, I would imagine. Um, a lot of, or let's say a lot of, some of this stuff that's on top is the admission um, uh, lines. That, I don't know what the heck they even call them, but way down there, you can't hardly see it. Anyway, there's an air pump down there. Mine's making all kinds of noise. I'm going to remove that, uh, put in an aftermarket replacement pulley, and then I'm going to remove all of the piping that goes around for that because I don't, you don't need it. Now, I was told uh, that I may end up getting a check engine light, 
So I think there's some kind of bypass or electrical bypass that I'm gonna have to do, but I will worry about that once it's done. Part of the problem with this engine running so bad, uh, these are the vacuum lines, or a couple of vacuum lines. They're rotted completely through. Uh, I'm not even sure where they connect up to. It's somewhere back in here, so I'm about to find out. Uh, but we will be replacing all of the vacuum lines. That's horrible. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drain the radiator and I'm gonna do it by, where's that thing at? There it is. That's kind of hard to see down there, there it is. So that hose you see down there at the clamp, undo that one and I'm just gonna drain it directly out into the pan. And then once I do that, then I will probably go ahead and start pulling off the water pump as well so I can drain it out as much of the engine as I can because uh, I'm going to replace that as well. I don't know if it's good or not, but I'm not going to take the chance. So I got the angle of the shot. I was going back and get a shot of this thing. <laughs> Didn't miss. Yes, I like to take pictures of everything so I remember where it goes. <laughs> All right, so this is part of that uh, uh, freaking emission system. And it has these, these little clips right here. Let me see if I can get in here and just show you. Okay, so he's got these little clips here that apparently Ford likes to use. And they're just basically crimped on. So what I did to loosen it up is just shove a screwdriver in there. And then kind of twist it back and forth. Kind of wedge at it. And that seemed to loosen it enough to where you could pull these pieces out. Obviously, I'm not going back with any of this. So we're going to throw it all away. So the bolts on the head gasket, or in the intake manifold, sorry, uh, are half inch, except for the one that's down inside there, and it's a, a torque fit. Uh, looks like about 25 or 30, let's find out. The only torque ratchet I have is half inch and it won't fit in
extremely surprised at how easy these bolts come off. I thought they would have been tighter than this. But after 170,000 miles, man, that's to be expected. And you can't see it, but on the other side, there's a bar that goes down, and there's a nut on the side of the intake here that has come off as well. apologize for the fan noise, but it is mid-90s out here, so uh, you guys deal with the fan for a while. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull off uh, the rest of my little connectors here. Uh, put this wiring harness here, and then go ahead and start trying to carefully pull off all the ejectors, uh, the, the ejector wires. you got to be careful not to break those little prongs on the side, because those things will snap off pretty dang easy. Having said that, I will probably break one. pressure a little bit and hopefully not take it to the face. Okay, 
so this little piece here disconnects and you can see how it runs down and it goes to that bolt right there. So you have to disconnect that stupid bolt or that nut before you can get that pipe off before you can pull the head or the intake manifold. Alright, so I am planning on installing long tube headers, which is what that thing is connected to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that freaking strap uh, with a sawzall or somehow get it off there. And I'm pulling all those pieces off. And I am not going to mess with them. I wouldn't want no metal shavings in here.
probably can't see very closely. This is where that stove was broke. And yeah, it's been broke for quite some time. There's junk built up in there, so. Yeah, that's been broke for a while. As is the one in the back. So, when I take it to the shop, I'll have them see if they can go ahead and drill and tap, or drill and, and remove, extract those two studs there. Uh, provided, of course, I don't have a cracked head, so we'll find out. Wiggle my butt back down in here. Hey, what? I think we're going to try to disconnect the exhaust manifold first because this is actually kind of rounded off a little smooth. Once you pull that off, you got the rockers and springs and crap to hit. And I'd rather not do that till the last minute. So we're going to do that first. off the exhaust manifold. Not surprising. All right, so we've got the uh, exhaust manifold loosened up, plugs pulled, so now we're going to try to pull the distributor, I mean the distributor, <laughs> now we're going to pull the valve cover. Let's get our terminology right. rods out. Now, I fully intended to go ahead and change the cam to like an RV cam, but with the way things are with COVID right now, 
I couldn't find one that wasn't in delivery until like the end of August, like a month or so from now. And I ain't got that much time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, leave it like it is, let's leave it in stock. But I'm going to pull these out, obviously leave them in, in sequence so that I don't uh, get them out of order. Okay, so we're continuing on and uh, fixing up this 351 modified in my 96 uh, F250. Uh, what I've already ordered is pretty much all the parts, but I'm going to go ahead and pull off the pulley and the harmonic balancer because I ordered a new timing chain. And obviously, I'm going to change the gasket and everything back there. Uh, I figured I'm already this far along. I might as well go ahead and change the, um, the timing chain and all that as well. <laughs> So I finally got this thing off. Uh, it sits on a ring inside here on the, the thing, and this is the original motor that's never been taken off, so it would wedge on it pretty good. Um, I did probably a big no-no. I tapped on it a little bit, that didn't do anything, so I took the pry bar and kind of worked on both sides of it. Not really crazy about doing that on, you know, on top of a harmonic balancer, because uh, it does, you know, you run the risk of actually moving this. Uh, moving over the, the outside sleeve that sit on top of that rubber, uh, but I'm giving thought to changing that out and putting aftermarket on there, so it may not be a big deal. So we're going to go ahead and work on pulling the harmonic balancer off. Alright, so I got the harmonic balancer off. I tried to record it, but it looks like I messed up. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can see there's some cracking in here on that rubber seal. Some of it may be on the surface, but it looks like some of that actually is all the way through. So, yeah, we're definitely going to go ahead and change this uh, harmonic balancer out for a new unit.
gonna get ready to go ahead and change out this uh, timing chain and try to show you that I've got the got the two circles lined up as best I can so we're top dead center uh, right on one and I'm not sure this timing chain is that bad I mean there's a little bit of movement but it doesn't I, I don't know I don't think it's that bad but we'll find out when I put the new one on uh, again I'm gonna go ahead and change it anyway just because I got the engine this far apart so mine as well around 42 to 45, somewhere in that ballpark. putting your heads back on. Uh, I sent these heads off to be repaired. Uh, it turns out they weren't cracked or anything. Uh, not much warping uh, on the bottom as well. Uh, there was a couple issues with uh, a couple of the seating surfaces which were replaced and rebuilt. So I uh, got these completely rebuilt. A little more money than I wanted to spend but a heck of a lot cheaper than some aftermarkets. So, uh, what I've done is, before I put this back on, I went through and I chased all the threads. Uh, the, the inside ones here were not that big of a deal, but the ones on the exhaust side down there were uh, pretty nasty in there. So I chased those threads out, and then by oiling them, obviously it helps with the, the studs going back in, and the bolts going in, nice and easy, and that way when I torque them, I'm actually torquing them down to the actual spec and not uh, with any kind of tension that's in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the other one on, and then we'll go ahead and start working on torquing those down. All right, so the uh, torque procedure on 351 modified uh, starts with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then you go to 55 the first time, do that sequence on both sides, 65 the second time, and then 95 to 110 the last time. Start putting these putting the, uh, heads back together. Uh, I've got the push rods pulled out exactly the way I took them out, so we're gonna go ahead and drop them back in.
So I've looked online about a lot of different ways to uh, tighten down all the rock. Yeah, hold up right there. So I'm sorry to say that after a lot of researching online, uh, finding different information about 351 Windsors, um, it turns out that all the information I was given was completely wrong. So the rest of this video, I was going to go through a process of how you rock this one and adjust this one back and forth. Turns out the 351 is Windsor is the easiest one to set the rockers on. All you do is torque all of them down to 25 pounds and lock it in. Um, I don't know why it was such a hard thing for me to find this information. I ended up having to find a mechanic to help me out with it. And yeah, because every time I tried to do something, they would just continually be loose and I couldn't figure out why. So it turns out the information I was getting on the internet was not correct. Imagine that. All right, so we have got everything put back together. And I'm going to kind of walk you through a few of the final little details and things that happened that, uh, unfortunately, I did not get on camera. Um, you're probably going to notice that I've got different vacuum lines on here. And there's a little bit of damage you're going to see down there around on those wires. Um, it seems that I ended up cutting one of the O-rings on one of the injectors up here. And, in fact, it was on that one there. And when I turned the ignition key on to check for leaks, apparently I didn't wait long enough for the leak to happen. And so when I first test fired this motor, it ran for about 15 seconds before it ignited. So I ended up catching all of this on fire, <laughs> unfortunately, and it burned up. Uh, it, it, luckily, the wiring is all protected by the, this uh, the wrap that it had on it. Uh, so the wire, the protecting the wire wrap protected the wire. So uh, it did its job. But all the little poly vacuum lines that ran around them, red ones and all that, those things melted instantly. And they were cracked and junk anyway. So I ended up having to go through and rewire, um, and not rewire, but rerun hose uh, for all the vacuum lines. The one thing that I did not do uh, yet is I did not go back with this box yet. Mainly because I'm not exactly sure where all this stuff runs to. So I'm going to have to do a little research. Um, I thought I, I thought I could kind of figure it out, but I tried it uh, yesterday and ran just some vacuum lines over to here and it ended up where the motor wouldn't even turn on and run. So, <laughs> uh, lesson learned, double, triple check for the gas leaks prior to turning this thing on. Um, you can also see that all of the uh, emissions lines are gone. I got rid of all of those as well. Um, the EGR is on here. But uh, what you can't see is the fact that there's actually a plate between there. And so this EGR is not doing anything. Uh, I've still got it wired in, so the computer thinks it's still there. But it's not plugged into anything. And then we've got it just open-ended down there. It's not going to anything. Uh, I did, in fact, install my long tube uh, headers down there. Um, yeah, it's a good thing I didn't record myself putting those on. Uh, there would have been way too many beeps and beeps and beeps on that because uh, that was not an easy task. Um, this side here, driver's side was very easy. Passenger side was not so much. Um, I picked up them stainless steel headers off of eBay for like 150 bucks, and I ended up having to clearance several of the holes um, to make sure that it would actually fit because it wouldn't go on there. So that was a bit of a pain in the rear. Uh, other than that, uh, new water pumps on there. Everything else is good. Um, you'll know, uh, you'll see in a, a later video that I had an issue with um, the fuel pump. I mean, excuse, excuse me, not fuel pump, the fuel filter, uh, which was causing the motor to hardly run at all. And I was really concerned after I rebuilt the top end of the motor that there was still something wrong. Uh, but turns out it was just a fuel filter. So, uh, but very happy with it runs pretty good uh it's not a screamer it's an f-250 it's a tow truck so uh really not expected to be but very glad that uh i was able to get it back together and everything works